Hello, my name is Rob Pache, and I am a programmer at FXEM that focuses on algorithmic trading. In this three-part video series, I will teach you how to code your very own Forex trading algorithm in Lua that executes trades on FXEM's trading station desktop platform. In this video, you will learn how to prepare your computer to code a strategy in Lua, create a functioning parameters window, and create indicator streams using those chosen parameters. Before we get into the lesson, however, there are a couple of risk disclaimers that you must read and understand regarding Forex and CFD trading. Please pause the video and make sure you understand the risk associated in trading this market. Also, in later videos, we'll be discussing how to backtest and optimize your strategies. Please understand that the results in backtest and optimizations are hypothetical in nature. Okay. The first objective in this video is to prep your computer so that you're able to program a strategy in the Lua programming language. To do this, you will need to go to fxcodebase.com, click on the SDK tab, then click on download the latest version of Indicore SDK. Indicore SDK is the software development kit that assists traders in creating their own custom indicators and in our case custom strategies for FXEM's trading station desktop platform. By default, Indicore SDK installs in the C drive under the folder GetSoft. Click on Indicore SDK and this is the folder that holds all the tools we need to develop our strategy. Let me actually show you the key components we will be using. You have the Indicore IDE, also known as an editor or a debugger, which is what we will use to help code our strategy in these classes. The file name is debugger.execute. Then you will also have the Indicore user guide, also referred to as the documentation for Indicore. The user guide is great. It'll show you every single thing you can do inside Trading Station with custom strategies and indicators. I actually wouldn't recommend trying to go through it all unless you were trying to learn absolutely everything all at once. It would take a really long time. What I personally use the most is the search feature. If you're looking for a specific function or action, you can actually search for it inside here and it'll show you how to do it in the strategy and it will show you examples of how it's used in actual code. So for example, if you typed in create order, there would be clear instructions on how to create an assortment of different order types, like limit orders, market orders, market close orders. And it will give you clear examples of how those orders can be used in your own code. Let's say we wanted to use a trailing stop. And it will give us examples of how to attach a stop or a limit to your trades. So if there's ever something specific you're looking to do and you're not sure how, search for it inside the user guide and you'll probably be able to find it. Alright, so now your computer is set up to code. So let's move on to today's second goal, creating a parameters window. A parameters window is a window that will pop up on our screen each time we turn on our strategy to start trading. It will ask us what specific settings we want the strategy to use. Settings like how many candles do we want our moving average to be based on? Uh, do we want to set a stop loss on our trades? If yes, how many pips do we want our stop losses to be set to? Settings like that. So let's open up our editor. Remember, the file name is debugger.execute. Then let's click on the small S icon in the top left corner. This will create a new strategy. Go ahead and type in a name for your strategy. then click save. Make sure you select create using wizard. This wizard will create our parameters window for us and on top of that it will code about 80 percent of the rest of our strategy for us. Next we need to put in the name and description that will appear on the platform when we select the strategy. And then you can select your main time frame. Understand that you'll always be able to change the time frame later on if you decide to use a different one. For this, I'm going to use an hourly time frame. Also, if you want alerts, you can do that too. It's up to you. But for this strategy, I'm not going to be using alerts. 
Now the parameters window, this is where we need to decide what indicators we want so that we know what options we need to have when launching our strategy. So for example, if you want to use a moving average, you will need a parameter that allows you to select the number of periods you want to set for the moving average indicator. The strategy I'm building is using a simple moving average, so let's go ahead and add that to the parameters window. For the unique identifier, I'm going to use something that I can recognize, like MA periods. This way I know exactly what this parameter is. The displayable name is what's going to appear in the parameters window when you're selecting the option. So we want that to be as clear as possible. We can also give it a description. Our parameter type for a moving average is going to be an integer or any whole number. And for our default value, I'm going to select 100. But just like time frame, you'll be able to change this whenever you'd like inside the parameters window before running the strategy. Click OK, and we now have our moving average parameter set. In my custom strategy, I'm going to be using the moving average as a trend filter, but I still need another indicator in my strategy that will tell me when to make buy and sell trades. For that, I'm going to use an indicator called the slow stochastic. If you're not familiar with the slow stochastic, it's a very popular charting tool available on most charting packages. It consists of two lines moving up and down between 0 and 100. And typically traders look to trade whenever the lines cross each other when they're at key levels. We'll get into the logic of the strategy a little bit later. But for now, all we need to know is what parameters we need to have when creating the slow stochastic. If I look up the properties for the slow stochastic, we see there's three different parameters. Percentage K periods, percentage D slowing periods, and percentage D periods. That means we need to have these parameter options available in our strategy parameters screen. So let's go back and add all three of these parameters into our strategy wizard. So first, we're going to add K periods. I'm going to give it the same display name as on the platform. For the description, I already know what this is used for, so I'm not going to type one. For our type, integer, that's great. And the default value for slow stochastic is 5 for the percentage K periods. So we click OK. And now let's add the next one. The next parameter is going to be percentage D slowing periods. So let's add that. We'll call it D slow periods. We'll give it a display name. No description again. Integer's good. And the default value is 3. Okay. Then the last parameter we need, percentage D periods. So we'll add that. We'll just call it D periods. And its default value is 3 and click OK. All right, so we have our parameters set up for our moving average and our slow stochastic. Once we have everything filled out, we click OK, and the wizard will go to work. This is a huge time saver. The code automatically generated is roughly 80% of the code that our strategy will require. So let me explain what we're looking at here. There are three main functions that every strategy must have the init function, the prepare function, and the update function. They all complete different tasks, but work together to create your custom strategy. The init function is the first thing that's run when the strategy is turned on to trade. It pops up a parameters window that allows the trader to select the specific options they want. We can see the moving average and the slow stochastic parameters the wizard had as input, but we can also see other important settings we can select as well such as whether the strategy is allowed to actually trade or only send trade alerts. We can set what lot size we want the strategy to trade, or where we want stop and limits to be set, or if we want stops and limits to be set at all. All these options we see in the init function will appear inside the parameters window when we launch the strategy. In fact, check this out. If we were to add this strategy to trading station right now, it'd understand the init function. The wizard fully completed the init function for us. The strategy is not coded to do anything past this point, but we can see the parameters and see what it all looks like. It's pretty cool. Underneath the init function, there's a block of global variables. 
These are variables that may be needed in multiple functions, so the wizard created them as global variables so they can be universally used in multiple functions. The next function is the prepare function. The prepare function is where we can store our parameters as simple variables, create our chart's legend that appears in the top left corner of the chart, we specify what our price source will be, and also create any indicator streams that our strategy will need to reference. It's a pretty long list of things to do, but again, the wizard did most of this work already. The last function is the update function. It's actually named ext function, but I will refer to it as the update function. This function is the brain of the strategy. Unlike the init function and the prepare function that only run one time when the strategy starts, the update function runs every time a price bar closes. So if you set the strategy to run on a five minute time frame, this update function will run every time a five minute bar closes. If you were to run it on an hourly time frame, the update function will run every time an hourly bar closes, etc. The update function is where all of the trading logic will be written. Okay, so this brings us to our third and final goal of this video. We will create our indicator streams using our parameters. We have two indicators, a simple moving average and a slow stochastic. I'm going to name them IMA and I slow stock. You can name your indicator streams anything you want, but I always name my indicator streams with a leading lowercase i so that they're easily recognizable when I'm looking at a complex block of code. To create our indicator streams, we will call a special indicore function called core.indicatorsCreate. We can see this function inside the user guide and see exactly how it works. Calling this function requires three arguments. I'm going to copy and paste this inside our prepare function. We're going to put this at the very bottom. Let's create our moving average indicator first. So I'm going to say IMA equals core.indicators create. Calling the function requires three arguments. You have the ID, you have the price source, and then the parameters that the indicator requires. The ID is the file name of the indicator that is being created. Now from my experience in using FXCM's Trading Station desktop platform, I know the file name for a simple moving average is MVA. But if you don't know the file name of the indicator you're using, act like you're adding that indicator onto a market scope chart. The capitalized abbreviation is the file name and is what should be put as the ID when creating an indicator stream in a strategy. So I'm going to type MVA as the ID. The second argument, the price source, is simple. The wizard already created a price source for us called GSource. So we're going to put that as our price source for this indicator. But to be more specific, we don't just want the price source for our moving average. We want our moving average to be based specifically off the close price. So let's put gsource.close. The third required argument are the parameters the indicator requires. For a moving average, we only have one parameter, the number of periods, which we designated as the variable MA periods. Now, I need to do the same thing for my slow stochastic indicator. So let me copy this line, and then we'll fill in the differences. So first the name is I slow stock. Remember that's what we named it up here. So we're going to create an indicator. We need the ID, which is the file name. The file name we can look up in market scope if we added the slow stochastic to a chart. So we can see the slow stochastic. The file name is SSD. So let's put that in. Now for our price source, slow stochastic I know actually needs the open high, low, and close price. So let's remove close and let's just give it the entire price source. And for the parameters, 
it's going to be a little bit different than a moving average because we have three parameters. Remember inside our strategy wizard, we put all three K periods, D slow periods, and D periods. We need to make sure all of those parameters are inside the create indicator function. So let's do K periods, comma, D slow periods, comma, D periods. We want to make sure that they're in the correct order. So these two lines are initializing the indicators inside the prepare function. The last thing we need to do in this video is to make sure that these indicator streams are properly updating every time a bar closes. And to accomplish that, we need to add a couple lines inside the update function. For updating an indicator inside the update function, we can do that using the update last function. So let's first, let's make sure the moving average is updating. IMA colon update core dot update last. And then we'll do the slow stochastic. I slow stock colon update core dot update last. And this makes sure the first thing the strategy does at the close of each bar is update the indicator streams so that it has their latest values. And then underneath these two lines, that will be where our strategy logic is. But that is going to be in our next video. So to conclude, we learned three things in this video. We prepared your computer to code a strategy in Lua. We created a functioning parameters window. And then we created indicator streams using those chosen parameters. In the next video, we will write our strategy logic in English followed by translating that into Lua. Then we'll use simulation mode to double check our logic and make any necessary changes. And then we'll use a custom function to open and close trades and manage our open trades properly.